For many women who were accused of collaboration during the Second World War, they often had to undergo the horrific torture of the ugly carnival. In France, this was used and women accused of sleeping with the enemy or the Germans were paraded in front of a huge crowd and they would forcibly have their heads shaved and they were also made to run the gauntlet where the baying crowd would kick, hit and try to inflict more suffering onto them. It was a sight which was noted by the Allies as disgusting and many Allied soldiers were fearful of getting involved in stopping it as women were covered in swastikas and other Nazi symbols aimed to embarrass and punish. Some women in Paris who worked inside of the brothels where German soldiers visited were even killed during their ordeal. But there was one woman from France who lived a very interesting life, and she was a gold medal winning athlete, who actually became an honoured guest of Adolf Hitler. But she would become known as the hyena of the Gestapo, for the fact she was involved in collaborating with the Nazis. For this, the French resistance made Violette Morris pay. But what was her story? Join us today as we look at the execution of the hyena of the Gestapo, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Violette Morris was born in April 1893, and she was a daughter of a retired French army cavalry captain. During her teenage years she spent a lot of time inside of a convent, and she would then in August 1914 marry Edouard Joseph Godard, but the couple would divorce nine years later. But as the First World War was gripping the continent, Violette Morris decided to have an involvement in the conflict, and she would learn how to drive at this time, and she would then during the war drive ambulances at some of the deadliest battlefields. She would during the Battle of the Somme and the Battle of Dun serve as a courier of information near to the front lines, and she was considered rather skilled at this. But Morris was a keen sportswoman, and she would play football for the French women's national team, and she won gold medals at the women's Olympiads. But as well as being a skilled footballer, she was also a national water polo player, and she was also a pioneering boxer, and she would fight against many men, and often at times beat them. Also, she was involved in wrestling, weightlifting, diving, archery, motorcycle and bike racing, and even underwent surgery to allow her to fit in race cars more easily. She would compete in the Tour de France automobile, and in many of her races, including endurance ones, but her lifestyle was very different to traditional women at the time. She dressed in men's clothes, swore often, was a very heavy drinker, and because of this the French Women's Sports Federation would refuse to renew her licence, and she would be barred from taking part in the 1928 Summer Olympics. She had also at some point punched a referee during a football match, but her racing licence would also be revoked, and she would then try to sue these authorities and bodies. At her trial she stated that, We live in a country made rotten by money and scandal, ruled by speechifiers, schemers and cowards. This country of little people is not worthy of its elders, not worthy of survival. Some day its decay will bring it to the level of a slave, but if I'm still here, I won't be one of those slaves. Believe me, it's not my temperament. However, in January 1933, Violette Morris moved to a houseboat with her partner Yvonne de Bray, and they were then moored on the River Seine in northwest Paris. They lived off the inheritance that they received, and also sung and began to gain popularity, as they would perform sometimes on the radio. But on Christmas Eve 1937, whilst they were having dinner with their neighbours at a restaurant in New Lee, Violette came across an aggressive drunk man named Joseph Lecam. She tried to calm the man, but the man then the next day arrived at their houseboat, and an argument broke out between Lecam and Violette Morris. He pulled a knife and threatened her, but Morris pushed him, and then he lunged at her with the knife, and she then pulled out a revolver and shot Lecam twice. He later died in hospital, and because of this, Violette was then charged with murder, and was held in prison before her trial, but she was acquitted on the basis of self-defence. But then something surprising would occur. Her reputation as an iconic female sportswoman would be overshadowed, and she would become involved and ingratiated with one of the most evil regimes the world has ever seen. In December 1935, she met Gertrude Hanecker, who was an ex-racer, but also a German journalist. She was a recruiting officer and agent for the SD, the Nazi Security Service, and she invited Violette Morris to attend the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, and she would then become an esteemed guest of Adolf Hitler. But this then began a number of years in which Violette would collaborate and willingly pass over information about the French military that she could get her hands on. Some information that she passed on to the Nazis was invaluable, 
including partial plans for the Maginot Line, which were passed to the German army, as well as maps of strategic points inside of the city of Paris. She even gave over diagrams and schematic blueprints for the French tank the Samoa S-35. The information regarding the plans of the French defences would be invaluable during the German invasion of France during the Second World War, but it's not known what led to this seemingly iconic French woman to become in the pockets of the Nazis. As the Second World War broke out, she would continue to collaborate with the Nazis and would continue to betray her nation. She became a member of the Carlinghi for collecting the money that the French had to pay to the Germans to buy goods to France on behalf of the German state. But what this was was a French division of the Gestapo who could at times arrest and torture people and they were supported by the Vichy government. Propped up by the Nazis, Violette Morris lived very well on her barge and she would then join the occupation of France take on a number of different roles for the Nazis and the Germans. One of her objectives was to help foil members of the Special Operations Executive, a British spy organisation that would help collaborate and link up with the French resistance. It's believed that Violette during this would have been involved in the torture of the suspects, and many of these were women. She would have conducted barbaric torture interventions, where she would beat and whip the prisoners, as well as batter them senseless, and she became allegedly a complete brute. Violette Morris was also involved in sourcing black market petrol and gas for the Nazis, which would run a garage for the German Air Force also to conduct maintenance and fill up their aircraft. She also drove key Nazi and French officials, and she would have done this in the lead up to the fall of France also. Some historians have debated her role in the spying and torturing, and others class her as a scapegoat, but her reputation became rather well known across Paris and France, and she was referred to as a notorious hyena of the Gestapo. The work that Violette was conducting was directly contributing to the arrests and suffering of many French civilians, and she continued to work for the Germans and the Nazis, and continued to be a rather active collaborator. But because of her reputation, she then became a target for the French resistance, who once they were gaining a foothold across the nation, began to attack. The resistance at times wasn't the best coordinated, but they would try to take out those who were considered helpers for the Nazi regime. After years of occupation, and after years of suffering, they decided to take out Violette Morris. On the 26th of April 1944, she was driving her Citroën Traction Avant along a country road from Louis to Epagens in Normandy. Inside the car were members of the Ballieu family, who had also benefited from the Nazi regime. However, she didn't realise that the car she was driving had in fact been messed around with by members of the French resistance, who had planned to ambush her. As Villette Morris's car came to a spluttering halt on a country road, members of the French resistance stepped out from hiding places, and they opened up their machine guns or weapons onto the car. The vehicle was littered in bullets, and inside the car, three adults and two children were all killed. There were accusations that Morris was the intended target, but inside the vehicle the resistance had taken out a number of collaborators, but also, tragically, some children. Violette Morris's body was literally riddled with bullets and was then taken from the car to a local morgue. Her body went unclaimed and she was then buried inside of an unmarked grave. Many historians have debated her involvement inside of Nazi-occupied France and some have doubted the scale of her collaboration. It's believed that she did, a few months before her death, tell the Gestapo about a resistance network involved in parachuting people into the country and they would also sabotage machinery. The Gestapo would then shoot these six people, including the wife of one of the resistors. Another informing session led to the Germans capturing an arms store which was being built up, with seven resistance members then being killed, and ten more were sent to the prisons of Paris for torture. But others have claimed the resistance made her a scapegoat. But Violette Morris's career as a celebrated and skilled athlete of the 1920s was overshadowed by her involvement with the Nazi regime, which brought a significant amount of shame to her legacy. But she would meet a brutal and bloody end alongside others, who were suspected of collaborating with the Nazis, with her body and car riddled in bullets. What is interesting, though, is why Hitler invited her specifically to attend the Olympics. He may have seen Violette as someone who could be used to gain information, which is what she did. She was a woman who had a sketchy past involving murder, but she was someone who suffered financially during the 1930s. The schmoozing by the Nazis, for her, may have been what ingratiated her into helping them during the Second World War, 
but information she passed over would be key for the invasion of France. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.